Mr. Ambrose talked with, talk with me earlier. He'll be getting from Councilman Galloway this year uh, in finance. And probably on the 9th, where we're going to have a special or a council meeting on the 9th, uh, we'll have a finance committee of the whole prior to that meeting where we'll be able to ask specific questions that on the audit after we've had an opportunity to go through the meeting. So, Mr. President, normally when y'all do the audit, is this the normal process that has been in the past year, Mr. Kente? Do we normally get this type of presentation first, or do we do it in finance committee? Normally, normally we don't do a presentation and then have a second meeting with questions. Um, I think typically it was presented at a council meeting, um, and then we just ask questions there. But we usually got the audit ahead of time, and we have not gotten the audit ahead. And I'm not blaming our staff, we sure staff, kind of like the men's. Yeah. Uh, no, we, it wasn't given to us. Right, so this audit hadn't been given to us like normal. Normally we'll have it ahead of time and we would be prepared to ask questions. So now we are just now getting it. So we will still proceed with the presentation, right. no questions, and then we will set up a second meeting and finance how, how long do we think this will take? Do we know? This this presentation now? Yes. Half hour? But I mean, the audit book is, I mean, it's pretty lengthy. So I understand. So, so who's telling us that we can't ask a question? Emergency manager. Um, may I ask the oh, emergency manager a question? Mr. No, President. We're just going to go through with the I mean, really. If, I, if I'm trying to digest a presentation, the emergency manager, if he really wants to work with us, it seems appalling that he would tell us that we got to sit here like dummies getting a presentation. Yes. So, so, you know, this is a new emergency manager. This is a new day. They're saying in April we'll transition out. I want to politely ask Mr. Ambrose, why can't we be ourselves? And I've been in school. I went all the way to Michigan State. Even in school, we can ask questions. We're smart, but every now and then, if I have to ask a question, I don't want to be embarrassed out of the public. I might have a question um, that is relevant for me to digest the presentation. Who makes these ridiculous orders? Mr. Ambrose, does he tell the yes. truth? And if he is, then could I appeal to you? and a business in human sense to change that order and let us politely get through this presentation. We're going to go, yeah. we're going to go ahead with the presentation. If I would suggest that if you have some specific questions that you write them down so you don't forget them and you want to be able to ask, ask those questions on the end. But we're going to, we're going to, we're going to move forward with the presentation and um, you know if we can do it, if we can do it in a civil and order to everybody's going to want to do it. The presentation would be no more than Black History Month, I have a point like this. 
that we can't be polite and civilized month after month after month. This might be the day that when you start moving the citizens that I represent, and when people start disrespecting me, I'll take an escalated approach. I wouldn't care if I got arrested or removed. My position is this. We have been civilized and it's, and it's polite and civilized to ask how the presentation don't go. We heard how it was done. We heard it. Now I've asked him politely to give us some leeway. He sit there just looking. Maybe he wants the councilman arrested. Maybe he wants us to look at a presentation we don't understand and ask no questions. So look, I'm no tested tonight. And I'm telling you, if I test it tonight, if these citizens are messed with wrong path, and if I'm messed with wrong fit, I think this is it, Mr. Ambrose. Now, I don't know what you'll get up here and say. I don't know what you're hearing us say. Maybe you ain't hearing this conversation, but there's nothing wrong with me being able to say, could you repeat that part of the presentation? Right. There is something I don't Mr. understand. Mr. Mayor, we hear what you're saying, and I don't disagree with what you're saying. We're asking to give us a leeway. But the reality of the situation is, is, it is what it is. So let's move on. Whatever it is, ask it. Do you disagree with us? Just ask it. So we and the child can set these rules. You and the child set these rules? Okay, that's why I think we got to change our system of protocols. Don't do this to us. Don't agree with me. Okay, let's do like we did in the auditorium. Let's see how this presentation goes. And at the end, if it ain't right, not only will y'all be arrested, but I think today I'll go with you. I do have a question. I don't know if you can answer. Um, I too had concerns about not being able to ask questions. I don't want. I don't want to make a um, show of it. When I remember the last presentation, and you guys can, I was a member council person, but it seems like it was delivered in, in a committee room where we were able to ask questions, and, and I really remember it because I remember the room. But my question is. When we do have questions um, at the night meeting, is the two presenters from Yo and Yo going to be there as well? Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. And just to clarify for everybody else, I got off an airplane at 2.30 at about 3.15. Year that the 
uh, state has achieved a, a favorable result in its financial uh, statements to the extent the revenues have exceeded expenses and the deficit has been reduced significantly. Uh, we are moving forward, forward uh, well in accordance with the deficit elimination plan that's in place. We look forward to that continuing. I want to give you full opportunity to understand the results of FY14, hence the special committee of the whole meeting coming up. Uh, and, and as you all know, this is just the beginning of a process as we begin to think about the next year's budget. Uh, there's a meeting scheduled for January the 28th uh, with the council to talk about the city's strategic plan to look at updating that. Uh, and we anticipate that the council will be in a position to uh, adopt that on February the 9th. It puts into place the first few steps of moving forward to developing another multi-year budget, like budget that updates in FY16, establishing one for FY17. Uh, we are fully expecting and uh, anticipating uh, working with the council as they develop this budget. Uh, and uh, by the time April rolls around, the mayor uh, will be presenting a, you know, a balanced budget for, for that. And this is the beginning of a very important process uh, for, for the city as it moves forward into its transition. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn this over to uh, Mr. David Youngstrom and Ms. Jamie Rivet of Yo and Yo. Uh, this, the Yo and Yo uh, are our auditors for the, this is their first audit with us. Um, so, uh, you know, from our perspective, it's been valuable to have a new set of eyes. Um, you know, we greatly appreciated the uh, prior relationship we had with the former firm. Um, and selection for Yo and Yo was not based on any dissatisfaction, but from our perspective, uh, it was a result of a competitive process, and there's an added benefit of having an additional set of eyes. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over. Well, good evening. Um, you do have a document in front of you, it's a regular lengthy. Uh, I do also, I brought a PowerPoint for tonight to do the high level presentation to you, and then you'll have time to look through that document for our next meeting, yeah, if, that's, if that's okay with council. So, we have a PowerPoint here. Um, first off, I'm Dave Yostrin, this is Jamie Rivet. We're both partners at Yo and Yo. We really appreciate the opportunity to be here to present your audit. It's our place, as uh, you said, it's our first year with you. So the first year provides a lot of unique opportunities. So with that, I guess we'll just get started. Does everybody have the PowerPoint handy? No. There should be a, there should be a bound yeah. copy. Yeah. This is the same thing that we have. There we go. So again, this is just a, a big overview of the whole thing. We'll have plenty of time to discuss any details you have, any questions you have on the thick bound report um, at the next meeting. But this is just to kind of give you an overview of the process. First off, the audit was submitted by the deadline. December 31st is your deadline for the state. We submitted it easily by that deadline in the first year. Um, we'd like to thank the staff and the office as well, because all their hard work in a transition year is a lot of work. So we couldn't do it without their help. So what this just does is takes your revenue transfers and your general fund. We're looking at your major general fund here. Taking a look at that and seeing what changed from one year to the next. And in a pie chart we're looking at here, our, our largest source of revenue is our state revenue. And that's about 32% of our revenue. And that's up about 6% 6 this year, which is about a million dollars. We did get about 600,000 of that in re additional revenue sharing this year. Our other, uh, our other revenues decreased quite a bit this year. And that's just a decrease in our federal grants as well as some, in the prior year we had some consumers revenue we got from an audit we had. And then our charges for services were down 1% this year, down to 18%, another major category. Our fines and forfeitures were the same, about 4% of our revenues. And our transfers did go up a little bit this year. And again, that's just transferring some of those things along in compliance with the plan for the water and the sewer fund. Our property taxes decreased about 1%, and our income taxes remained about the same from one year to the next. So that's kind of a picture and overview of our revenue um, in, uh, in the global sense. So let's take a look at it over time. You can see our bar chart shows where the revenues were for the last six fiscal years. And you can see 2011 was a big year. So if you back there, we, did, we had an $8.4 million in judgment levy that year and an $8 million loan to drive those revenues up there and kind of get back down to our lowest level in 2012. Um, in 2013, it did go up a little bit. We did have a million two from consumers. 
that we received, which was one time money, as well as $2.6 million dollars we put into uh, projects in the downtown area. We also received a $1.5 million dollar mock. And then in 14, you can see our revenues declined about 14%. So where do we spend our dollars? There's the community of income revenues, but where are we spending our dollars? The vast majority of our dollars are paid to public safety out of our general fund. 69% of our dollars, so 69 cents of every dollar we get goes to public safety. Uh, general government takes about 15%, district court about 10%, that was up 1%. Public safety is the same from one year to the next, 69% each of the years, so the consistent amount of public safety. Uh, our transfers did go up a little bit this year. We did receive some additional money this year, or instead of a little money in compliance for our plan. We funded some park style dollars as well as some building renovations. So that was up about 1%. And overall, our indirect costs the general fund were down about 2% this year. So that's really a pretty consistent picture. Parks and Recs is about the same as it was the prior year. Uh, general government the same as well as public safety. So spending is pretty consistent. Taking a look at the line or the, uh, the bar chart here for our expenditure and the trend again, you can see the 11 was the bigger expenditures. 12 it dropped, 13 again. And a 9% decrease from 13 to 14, also with that revenue decrease. So um, the revenue in the, re the revenue expense of the next chart will show you. you Got to take a picture of where your revenues are over a six-year period, as well as our expenditures. And you can see with the revenue in the level where we got a big peak of revenue in there, down in 12. In the last year, fiscal year, we've been in uh, the revenues had exceeded expenditures by 6.3 million in 2013, 3.9 million in 2014. So two positive years to been good. So what's left? We already obviously the deficit position everybody knows that here. Following our plan, we're doing the plan and consistent with what we've done. And you can see the last two years we're creeping up. Again, making good progress in two years. Two more years of the same progress, we should be pretty close to being out of that deficit. So I think we're just as good as the Another one of our major funds is our water fund. I won't spend too much time on talking about the water and sewer funds, just overall operationally. Um, overall, our revenue, you can see the water fund, the past, the first three years, we were behind. At 9, 10, 11, our revenues were less than our expenditures. In 12, 13, and 14, they were above. Now 12 went up, 13 went up, and, and 14 is back down. So three years of revenue exceeding expenditures, but the difference between a governmental fund and a water fund or enterprise fund is that the water fund has to maintain itself. So we need that revenue to be ahead of that so it can fund operations and not ongoing maintenance. Um, but then they we're narrowing the gap. It's just something we need to keep an eye Sewer fund, another one of our major funds. Um, you can see here the revenues had been trailing for four years. Uh, expenditures for those funds. After four years now, we've, had, we've got our revenues up to where they need to be. And you see a good consistent gap in there of the revenue and expenses. So we're, we're kind of where we need to be in the sewer fund. So that, that's good news in the last two years. We've gotten that to where we need to be starting in the 12. I'm going to turn this over to Jamie. Talk a little bit about some of the controls and some of the testing.
um, bills and making sure that there are no improper adjustments made to their accounts. And we're happy to note that during those tests, we did not find any discrepancies. During our audit process, we did note four items um, that are noted in the PowerPoint that you can see that we consider to be a material weakness. And what that is, that's a deficiency or a combination of deficiencies in your internal control where um, the entity's financial statements would not be able to prevent, detect, or correct that misstatement. And I'll just kind of touch on those. The first one was audit adjustments. In order for the financial statements to be in accordance with GAAP, we did have to post some journal entries, and those were used to post to adjust the debt, capital leases, some fund balances, and also some accruals. So we want to know that the majority of these entries really were just year-end adjustments, so the financial information that you're getting on an interim basis is accurate. The next item that we noted as material weakness was the capital asset maintenance. Um, when we were given the capital asset detail, there were adjustments that needed to be made to adjust for the additions and disposals of fixed assets. Um, so we just put in here that we suggest that, you know, we understand that the departments, the finance department is waiting on a lot of other departments to give them the information for the adjustments and disposals, um, which we know there wasn't a lot of time for the finance department to review this information before it was given to us. The third item noted was a prior period adjustment, um, and that had to do with a journal entry that needed to be posted as claims payable that was not caught in the prior year. Um, so we, we caught that while we were out there, and that entry has been posted, which did decrease the beginning that position of the governmental net assets. And the last item noted here was the inventory method. The water and sewer funds are required to record their inventory on the consumption method. And during the year, that method was switched to the purchase method. So there were numerous journal entries that needed to be posted to get that inventory to the correct value. Um, we also wanted to note that we did not identify any significant deficiencies um, while we're doing the audit. During our audit, we also became aware of the following matters that we feel are the opportunities to help strengthen um, the internal controls. And there are three areas that we noted here. The first one is credit card payment acceptance policy. Um, it's state law that the city have a formal policy and a past resolution if they're going to accept credit cards as payment. The next item is budget overages. During our review of the city's budget, we noted that there were several expenditures in excess of the budget, and we just wanted to make sure um, and mention that the city should be amending that and making sure that um, those items are amended to match what the expenditure is. And the last item that we noted, which I know you're all aware of, the deficit fund balance in the general fund. Um, however, there has been significant improvement. It was $12.8 million, and that's now down to $8.9 million. And there was the component unit, the Economic Development Corporation, also had an unassigned deficit at the end of the year of 119000 In addition to the financial statement audit, um, the city is also required to have a single audit, and that is because the city receives and expends more than $500,000 in federal grants. And this year, we tested five major programs, and while doing so, we covered 85% of the total federal expenditures, which was $13.4 million. And when we tested those, we only had one finding, and that was in the Community Development and Block Grant, or your CDBG grant. Um, and really, it was just there was a paper, the Consolidated Annual Performance Report, that's required to be reported 90 days after the year end, um, and that was not filed timely. So that was the one finding that we had. Now I'll turn it over to Dave to cover some of the future challenges of the city. The kind of last slide we have for you tonight is just talking about the future. And obviously we focus on the future every day we're here. Um, talk about the general fund, deficit fund balance, uh, we're moving in the right direction. Um, things have kind of gone our way a little bit, if you will. Um, personal property tax is a bigger, bigger form area. And we're supposed to be 
promise to get money for that, but there's no guarantee. So it's always an ongoing issue. When you hear talk about personal property taxes, you know, we we're moving those and how the state is funding those, we always have to be aware of that as we go. We're all dealing with escalating health care costs. Always going to be an issue for the next foreseeable future. That's something we have to get our arms around. Our claims were up a little bit this year again, and it continues to rise. Increasing retirement costs are something that most all municipalities in the state are facing every day, and that's something we do. We'll talk about legacy costs in a couple minutes. And overall, we have a declining tax base, which again, uh, a lot of places in Michigan are having that issue, um, and it tends to be push us into a, a deficit position. Uh, we do have an aging infrastructure. We don't have really any funding lined up for infrastructure and replacement of old buildings and equipment. Uh, which certainly needs improvements. And then lastly, I want to talk about our unfunded obligations or our legacy costs. We have unfunded OPEP costs. Um, at the end of the year, it was about $240 million. Um, Ten years ago, that number was eight, $860 million. So we made a lot of progress in that area. And then our unfunded pension obligation is another $261 million um, as of June 30th. So those are big issues that municipalities all over the state are dealing with. We're dealing with them here as well. So I just I always want to talk about that as we look what we're looking for in the future. As you hear things are out in the communities that we're talking about things. Some of these are the challenges we all face with that. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. All right, next item on our agenda is public hearings. We've got several of them tonight. The first one up is 140850, which is an amendment to Chapter 18. Um, if you want to talk about or if you want to move it on, I'll just be good. It's the very first one, 140850. It should be attached to our team here. All right, is there anybody here to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anybody here to address the City Council on this public hearing? Anyone to address the City Council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Next public hearing is on 140851, which is an amendment to Chapter 18. Um, the addition on uh, Article 10, which deals with the fund balance policy. Is there anybody here to speak to the City Council on this public hearing? Seeing none, this public hearing is closed. 140852, again an amendment to chapter 18, the addition of article 11, which deals with our federal funding. Is there anybody here to speak on this public hearing? Anyone to speak on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Next one is 140853, another amendment to chapter 18 dealing with the budget stabilization fund. Is there anybody here to speak on this public hearing? Anybody? Yes. Can you say your name for the uh, record and you do have three minutes. Good evening, Council. My name is Paul Herring. I'm at 525 on Mason Street. And my question related to these uh, special orders and also the presentation is where do we get these numbers online so that we can track and try to do this math ourselves? Um, I noticed that the other mentioned some places that they were looking for deficits. I didn't hear her mention the gas pumps outside. I mean, this, we don't is, know. This, is, this is a specific public hearing for um, the amendment to Chapter 18. And the amendment to, to Chapter 18 changes the way we do the budget, correct? Uh, no. No? Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, but just to answer your question, I believe all of this stuff is going to be posted online um, by the first of the week. So you can take a look at the audit document. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else to speak on this public hearing? <coughs> Anybody else? This public hearing is closed. Public hearing 140854.1, which is amendment to chapter 2, and this has to deal with developing and updating our strategic plan. Anybody to speak on this public hearing? Anybody? Public hearings closed. Mr. President. Yes. Are these things up for action tonight? Yeah. Okay. Later in the evening. 140855.1 is another amendment to Chapter 2 and it deals with the biannual budget and three year financial forecasts. 
Anybody here to speak on this public hearing? Anybody here to speak on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. 140905 is another amendment to Chapter 2, and this has to do with adopting budgets. Is there anybody here to speak on this public hearing? Anybody here? Speak on this public hearing. This public hearing is closed. 140910 is an amendment to Chapter 35, which deals with, um, I believe, the um, holidays that are recognized by the same Anybody here to speak to this public hearing? Anybody here to speak to this public hearing? Public hearing is closed. Are there any other petitions or unofficial communications? Are there any other communications from city officials? Update from Megan Hunter at our last meeting um, that our uh, 
uh, at the uh, conclusion of our finance committee, uh, talked about the strategic plan, um, also talked about a number of ordinances that will be uh, being forwarded to uh, legislative, to, to be uh, reviewed in legislative prior to uh, coming to the city council. We also, um, on the agenda tonight, have the capital improvement plan um, that is being adopted as not only part of the planning, but also part of the finance, which all leads into the budget for next year. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, Councilwoman Poplar, Chair of our Are you ready for me? Thank you, Mr. President. We did have a we did have a public works committee meeting that I had a chance to chair, and it was on Wednesday. January 7th, we had a presentation um, concerning the water and um, the people still at that meeting didn't feel safe drinking the water. So then Mr. Croft called in some consultants and um, that was last week in the dome and that was a follow-up meeting and the people still don't feel safe drinking the water. And the people are still asking um, answers as to why and when will they have safe drinking water that they feel that they're having. We're having meeting after meetings about this water. And the people, the people of the city of Flint still don't feel safe with their children and their family drinking this water. <coughs> the emergency manager got on television, so I'm on channel 12. Nothing against you, Ms. Daniels, but you did say the water was safe to drink. The bottom line is when the people that pay the bill for the city of Flint, when they feel safe, Drinking water, then we'll have a solution. But right now, they don't feel safe. They don't trust us. They don't trust the emergency men. They sure don't trust the water. So I'm hoping that our next public safety, public works. No, this is public safety. Any public works mixed together. Because we're trying to get some clean, safe drinking water. And the bottom line, I don't care how you turn it. If these people don't feel safe, then we got a problem. Yeah! Thank you, Mr. President. Is it appropriate for me to say, Mr. President, through you to chair person Tom? Uh, Mr. President, because you know I only had one more chance, I'm trying to stay for this whole meeting. But Mr. President, through you, the chairperson popular, I did attend that um, forum, and there has been debate about bringing the consultants in. I'm hearing that the consultant deadline to submit the request for proposals, I heard it change from today to maybe Friday. And I don't know how many people applied to try to fix the river source, but I heard that that has been extended. Have you heard that, Mr. Popper? He's probably not. Okay, so I heard that deadline has been extended. And so as we wait for the consultants, I know that you know, Mr. President, and I know that Mr. Ambrose knows he's had conversations with um, Sue Warren from Detroit. But Sue McCormick from Detroit is in this room. And when the public speaking comes up, I'll just chit chat with Ms. Ambrose. It's a delicate situation. Nobody wants to get caught up in politics, particularly I don't want Ms. McCormick caught up in it. But he let me know that he has no problem with her saying whatever she wants to say during public comment. He did have a problem with her doing the special order through you, Mr. President, and Mr. 
Mr. Madam Chair. So the quicker uh, we get through our agenda, the quicker you The quicker we get through the agenda, okay. um, the quicker we can hear whatever she has to say in three minutes. Mr. President, I wonder, well, I don't need to say that. I thank you for that opportunity, uh, Mr. Amber. Next item on our agenda is appointments, and we have two of them. Uh, the first one is an appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. This is an amendment uh, 140914.1, which is changing the expiration date um, on the previous resolution. Mr. Mays, that's in your board. Would you like to make a motion? Yeah. Um, then move to the would, support. I would vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would vote that we uh, approve. Uh, resolution one four zero nine one four point one. Been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? We have roll call. Yes, I heard somebody fix that. Yes, Mr. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Yeah. Motion passes. Uh, next up is 150027, which is an appointment to the EDC, and Councilman uh, Nelson will be one of our two representatives. And moved. Is there support? Support. The movement supported. Is there any discussion? Excuse me. Can you have roll call for us? Can you say it? I don't know. Economic Development Corporation. I deal with the small loan pool that the city has. And so there was two. There's only one now. There's only one now because the two people had no one there. So there was three? No, there was two. There was two people no longer here. So, we're starting that process. So, there's another one that. Okay, and how do we determine the appointment? Um, the administration asked for Mr. Nelson, okay. and then I approached Mr. Winfrey of Edible. Okay. And um, it's not a done deal. Mr. Yeah. Mr. President. Yes. You say the administration approached. The mayor. The mayor approached Mr. Nelson. Approached me about the appointment. And so the mayor initiated this. Now I'm going to support the project because of Mr. Nelson. Um, but I'm not really satisfied that the administration would approach to appoint Mr. Nelson and Mr. Nelson and Mr. Winfrey got elections coming up. And I'm here to tell you that we don't know how those elections are going to turn out and we've been advocating for economic development. So I know about political appointments, and so that means I'm going to approve it on the strength of Mr. Nelson. But I'm kind of appalled as a mayor to make that recommendation on an appointment. And if by chance Mr. Nelson don't win, then we got to start all over again. So I'm going to do it, but it has nothing to do with the recommendation from the mayor. That would get me to vote no. But for the support of a colleague, I'll do it. But that's kind of the wildest recommendation under the circumstances that I've heard of so far. All right. Thank you, Councilman. Any other discussion? We have a roll call, please. Yes. 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 Yeah, I'll do it this time. Yes. Amen. Okay, uh, we have no licenses, we have no bonds. Our next item is under resolutions 141400. Mr. President, I will move that we uh, approve 141400. They moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. President, this has to do with, I think, in short, um, switching Stewart Avenue from so many lanes to other lanes, and I want to see what part of Stewart Avenue that is. Stewart and, and, and Andrew Street. Through you, Mr. President and Mr. Nelson, do you know what part of Stewart that is within the third quarter of the Broad Street? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
that's read by Andy you know, Andrews to be a picture. Yeah. And to what are they here? It flows into is it, it, it's not industrial. It's, Going the other way back for the right. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Is there any other discussion? Can we have a roll call? Yes. 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 Motion. Motion carried. 150030 is the uh, capital improvement plan. Chairman, this is the capital improvement uh, plan. It's a five-year strategic plan uh, that we've all spent time looking at. It's a living uh, document that will be changed. It has priorities changed. But this gives us um, kind of goals that we need to set for when we adopt uh, the budget. And as we look into the future, <coughs> in the past, um, years that I've been on city council, we've never really had a plan like this to really strategically look at the priorities of where our funding should go. So this is just kind of a guide to help us in the future and to make sure that we're accomplishing um, those issues that we've identified um, in the cabinet improvement plan. So um, I'm happy to move this to Mr. I moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Mr. President, as I looked at this um, five-year capital improvement plan, and it looks like Megan um, Hunter wants to say it, we're maybe try to say something during this discussion period. I have no objection to that. But my position is this, and I'm saying this for the record, and I'm trying to say it loud and clear. We have switched from emergency manager early to emergency manager Ambrose and they tell us that by the 8th of April we will be in a transition period out from emergency manager. We'll wait to see. But my point is this. We have been functioning under emergency manager early with committees of three. We've asked for committees of whole. Because when we function with a mandatory type of attendance of three, and then we get out here and vote as a whole, some people know the details and some people don't. I go to most every committee, and so do Ms. Van Buren. But the point I'm trying to make is this. They tell us when we can meet, what we can put on our agenda, and it handicaps the flow of knowledge. I have an order that tells me what department heads I can ask questions about when, where, and what. So I can't just keep rubber stamping stuff. And I don't rubber stamp seven uh, point plans. I don't rubber stamp uh, five-year strategic plans, whether it's for capital improvement or anything else. I want the record to reflect that when it came to infrastructure, and even though I understand that they say about 50 million for that infrastructure as it relates to the water and sewer, and when I looked at that 50 million or so over a certain period of time, I know they tell us that then when we get to budget, we will fill in the blanks as to how we pay for that over that period of time, that 50 million. Wow. I like to know a lot when I vote. So it's going to be kind of tough for me to approve capital improvement funds at such rapid pace when people tell us when to meet, how long we can meet, and some of it ain't just them. My colleagues, if you want this job, you've got to have the will to meet. And you got to sometimes be able to meet longer than an hour and a half or True. two hours. True. Sometimes you have to meet at eight break for lunch and come back at five in order to digest some of this stuff. So here we go again. I'm familiar with the capital improvement fund. And remember, I don't want nobody looking back at Councilman May saying he voted for him. 
I want the council to be the council and council and maids to be separate if we don't do our due diligence. So in saying that, as the vote come around to me, I've got some soul searching to do. Because I'm here to tell you, and this is my final statement, the charter of this great city and the city of Flint tells us whether it's capital improvement funds for a new city hall, they've been talking about it, I think ain't nothing too much wrong with this, but capital improvement for pipes underground that deliver water, all of these capital improvements that they give us a skeleton draft and want us to approve it and then come back later and we fill in the money parts. I got a problem with because the charter tells us that if I want to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, I get to ask questions under oath. I get to ask questions just like they do in Washington and Lansing. I can put department heads, I can put the DEQ, I can put people under oath, and I can ask the question to get the truth, the whole truth. We've been known as a council that votes on half truths. So here we go again. Some stuff is coming at me. And for the record, I'm getting awful leery at votes coming at me. And I can't meet when I want, can't talk when I want, can't get the information the way I want. So I appreciate your indulgence, but I hope that people are listening to me close. Because We're I don't listening. want to just go along and get along. And at the end of the day, if I ain't got it all, I don't want them to say the council voted for that. I want them to say that the council, except for Eric Mays, voted for that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just not, not to carry on, but I wanted, uh, when I um, moved this, I meant to um, also say that the Planning Commission has looked at this and at the January 13th uh, Planning Commission meeting, they adopted this unanimously with some recommended changes and then those changes are incorporated in the uh, capital improvement plan. Thank you. We have roles. Uh, Mr. President, it seems like Megan Hunter was entering to her seat and she did. Is it okay if she wanted to say something? We're going to move forward with that roll call. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Motion carries. We have no liquor licenses on our agenda. Ordinances for second reading. We do have several. Mr. President, based upon these ordinances, how many of them are connected that we could put together, or do you want them all set?
They figure that if we approve this, we're going to get a transition advisory board and the emergency manager will leave. Well, my position is this. A city administrator being paid 140000 with a car, so, the highest paid person with an emergency manager or the forthcoming that will tell her she got power over the council and the mayor and a three or four member transition advisory board that she reports to is still just like a group of emergency managers. We don't have our democracy. So I don't like the way these things have came. And if I made a motion to refer them back to the legislative committee, which I now chair, I don't know what would happen now. So I've moved them. And once again, I'll listen to my colleagues and I don't just go along to get along. I learned in school. Know the details of what you're voting on. And don't get me wrong, I know some of this stuff. But guess what? I like the stuff to come back to the committee. And then when it comes out of the committee to the floor, I've done my final look. That did not happen. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other discussion? Do you have a roll call, please? No. Yes. 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 Just as a reminder, you have three minutes to come to the mic. standards is different from airborne TTHMs. 
They're telling me now when the steam from the shower or when the steam comes up from boiling the water, that them airborne things is different from drinking stands. So when you hear me say that I want the experts not to be in the dome on the panel, I want the experts before council, just like the charter say, under oath, telling me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Because when you do it the way the charter say, and I'll wrap it up, when you do it the way the charter say and get the whole truth, then guess what? If you don't, you could get a penalty. But when you do it a different way and nobody holds you accountable, they can tell you half of what they want. The first speaker that's gonna come up to this mic, if she will, and this Ambrose, I mean, if you didn't tell me that it was okay, because we don't want to damage no relationships. I'm so glad that you and Ms. McCormick had a casual conversation today, however it happened, and I hope from now on that y'all will pick up the phone and call each other, because I've had some conversation, and I'm finding out we ain't got to do no four to five million lump sum, and that the term, long term and short term, and all of the different variables. How, how, if you're asking her to come up first, is that your question? Well, I put a slip in for her first. <laughs> you? So her name would be called first. But now, if you ask it her, and if we is that, is that your request, Councilman? My request is her to be treated politely and that her and Ms. Ambrose and her in the dialogue and nothing I'm doing here is I don't want to jeopardize Detroit and Flint's relationship. If you want to hear what she has to say, I'm ready to hear. And I thank her so much for driving from Detroit and I thank Ms. Ambrose for saying thank you, that so good for her. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hope you have a good time, Mr. Freeman. Thank you. I hope I do too. Yeah. Drink some water. I'm here, and I live on Tusker Avenue in Lynch. And the reason I'm here is because of the same reason everybody else is here, the Mad Water. Mm -hmm. And we listened to everybody in all the meetings that they've had so far, and all of the get togethers and the town hall meetings and everything else that we've had so far. And everybody that comes to those meetings is in agreement. The water is bad. And we put it driven. And I want to thank the four members on this side here and Mr. Freeman wherever we went. Because last Wednesday night at the meeting that we had for the quality of the water, we sat in the meeting of the finance just before that meeting. And most of the council wouldn't even look at us. And the ones that did, except for Mr. Mays, Mr. Davis, and Mr. Nelson, looked at us like we would have had leprosy, like we were lepers. And when people got disgusted because they just would ignore us, and they got up to leave the room and all kinds of snickering. Mm -hmm. Well, as of Wednesday night, as Paul and me, there was about two predictions of me. Everybody walked out of that meeting on the same team. Before that, we all had issues. Before that, we all had problems. But we all had our individual stuff. After that meeting, we're one group. And I can tell you this, every one of us represents at least 50 people out there that we come to these meetings for. And you can make snicker and make all the point you want. But the truth of the matter is, is if we got to wait, then we'll wait, but we'll take care of it on election day, and we'll see that the jury's not going to be right. I'm going to Instead, you treat us and go 
want the third world to do to you. Give us what you want, when you want to have it, why you want to have it. The fact about the Flint River water, it's a ditch. So the water change every time the season changes. Yes. The water will never be consistent. No. So we don't hold no Flint River water. And every time you bring a fuck something in, you've got these are, uh, That's awesome. people up here behind the budget, and that costs money. Yeah, yeah. You bring it in, and then you got to test it, see if it's okay. So my bottom line to all of this is that these issues that we're facing local, fire, water, safety, police, maintenance, our unconcluding, unconcluding, is not only budget, but it's ethnic cleansing. Yes. You know, the damn well what you're doing. Yes. And yes. so one of these folks out of the city of Flint, we're going to have another agenda. The person that makes the last decision is the emergency manager right there. He is making the final decision on us getting water from Detroit. I plead and I beg that we consult for the pathologist who study the orchard or who study the, 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 the nature and the causes of diseases. So that we can submit a report to the federal court and ask the federal court, the master judge, to put an injunction on using the Flint River. We're fighting against two guys. This is this is my That's all. That's all. That's all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But your time is up. Thank you, sir. I'm just saying something for my colleagues that the city, if it was up to us, we'd change it overnight. But we cannot do that. Oh, it's the state. Oh, it's the state. The state is making the decision. The state, the emergency manager, is making the decision on us using the Flint River. City Council has no authority over that. But you have authority over me. No, I'm saying the City Council, if we had, if we could, we would change it tomorrow, City Council. Jerry Admiral has the authority. He's making the decisions not to switch us over. What kind of way? Let's get the pathologists. What are we doing together? Let's get the pathologists. Who can get us to get rid of Mr. Admiral? Let's get rid of Mr. Admiral. Please, sir. Right now. Yeah. This is the problem you guys know. And you 
our voice. And I'm, I'm, telling you, I'm using my hair. It don't look like it, but I'm using my hair. We got to I'm dizzy sometimes. I mean, I'm thinking most of the time, but I'm dizzy now. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and something's got to be done with us. And we need to be heard, man. We need to be heard real bad. And this infrastructure, what a drone. This, this is a drone joke. It's, it's infrastructure. What is that? We, we got, man, Mr. Mott knew some of this stuff when he was a kid. You know, he knows how to fix it. My neighborhood, I live in the park, is isolated. I feel like it's not even flushed right. You know what? It, just like you're in a river and you go to the right, you got all your dollars just going off to the right. We're not in that mainstream. This needs to be checked. <coughs> And as far as you letter, I have three houses on the east side, and I did not get one letter about any of this stuff going on. That's wrong, wrong, wrong. We can be informed now. Not tomorrow, not now. And we need our employer in here to come here. They saw all this. We need some help here. We need some better help. I'm done with the state. I'm done with the city. You guys are taking a rap. We're not getting the answers. We're done with this. It's not here. It's not here. This has got to go federal. People are getting sick, dogs, and who's dying that we don't even know about? Is that some other thing? Is there some kind of issue that, or somebody that can come in like you said, that the house right now? How many people are dying because of this? You know what I'm saying? Some of that, sir. All right, well, I want to say, I think we are being fed loose by a lot of other people. It is the thing. It ain't just him. We need a great federal government. This is bull, and I'm calling a bull right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, good evening. My name is Jack Mann. I live at the 2202 Montclair Avenue. Uh, I'm here about the water and one other issue. I'm 72 years old. I'm sent me a letter off telling me I can't drink the water. I shouldn't drink the water. Uh, my daughter just recently moved in to have a baby. So we can't use the water, period. To me, it's like me going down and leasing a car and you deliver it to me and there's no engine in it. But yet you want me to take that payment every month. This shouldn't happen. Okay, I, I'm really against this. Another thing is, I've talked to Scott Kincaid about this issue on Windermere Avenue where he's got a drive running there for the last two years in a residential area in the cultural center. And nobody will do anything about it. I've asked Justin Buchanan again today, and he said he ain't going to do anything about it. Well, it's not zoned to have a garage. I'm going to be I'd like to have that taken care of. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold Mitchell. I live at 759 East Linden Street. Uh, about this water stuff. Before the president left out of here, and put the vice president in his place. He said, sir, talked about, he told Mays, he tried to turn this place into a circus. And Mays said, he don't go along just to get along. But I said that just to say this. I went over to my paid house to get my money this morning. He said, when I got there, about 6.30 in the morning, he said, the lady called, told you to come in and get the dentist. But he said, no, I won't go down there. It's too early. He said, I won't make it up. I said, no, I want to go. But then, he didn't. He said, it's late. Then he said, I had to put $30 in the envelope. But when I got there, I had to get my tooth cleaned. Then she cleaned my tooth. She said, she said, take my blood pressure. She said, wait a minute. She got real quiet. I said, what's the matter, doctor? She said, you got that blood pressure, sir. I said, what you mean? He was good. She said, you represent the new, new age blood pressure. He was 18 or something, she said, but you the new, but she said, and I found him, I think you got a, might have to do with a root in there. I said, two or two. She said, no, we're back in Sandy, sir. The next report is on the 3rd of February. So I think it's out of the future. I think it's got something to do with that water, my blood pressure. So she said, let me not say we had a physical, and I had a thing. I said, my doctor is the oldest doctor in Flint, Dr. Diaz, from Dr. Kimmel, the Royal Hospital. 
So I'm going to have to go over there, maybe tomorrow, we'll get a disco, where you can check me out and see if this snake river water water mess, messing my blood pressure up, for treating somebody like third world cup. Third world people's in snake, and, and nobody's saying that. And Josh Cooper, trying to make you look like a old old up there, bald headed black man over there behind the seat. Like the more women's going to say, you know, I'm talking about women's revival, talking about getting rid of your bozo to get a jazz or something, drunk and stupid, cheating like a million old dog cop who's scared of you. I'm going to fucking thank you. Hey, man, if I was in you days, man, what do I do know? The city attorney already running out. Tell me what the. Uh, this stuff don't count because. Look at that, they go working in front of you, you ain't saying nothing about it. Right, 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 Josh talks about it. Search it. They won't. What? Hey, man, what's up? Your time is up. Your time is up. No. Your time is up. I got you, bro. I got you. Great, great, great. Great speech, bro. Our next speaker is uh, Mrs. Barbara Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Barbara Mrs. Wilson. You know, I'm a chicken, but I ain't spring ones, so I walk kind of slow. My name is Barbara Griffith Wilson. I reside at 2026 Miles Avenue in Flint, Michigan. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day soon I'll be able to drink the water that comes from my tap. Amen. I have a dream that one day very soon I'll be able to wash my clothes with the water that comes from my tap. I have a dream that one day, very, very soon, I'll be able to cook with the water that comes from my tap. And not have to spend dollars, not in my budget, for extra bottled water in order to cook. I have a dream that someone will hear the cries of the people. Water for life, not for profit. Water for the people, not so the water barons can have more money in their pockets. But so the people can have a quality of life, like our neighbors in Fenton, Davidson, and Grand Blake. I have a dream that you won't allow folk to be sick or die for nothing. I have a dream that you will push the button, Mr. Hi, my name is Deanna Phelps. I live at 940 Pago. Um, uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I've been a nurse for 38 years, and because of the HIPAA, because the government says I can't speak about it, but I've seen so many people having so many skin issues uh, within the last three or four months. Um, mostly these people are elderly. They can't, you know, they, they're not able to speak for themselves. Um, we should be able to do something for our community because basically we are not being, the water is not good for us. And um, we need some changes, bottom line. Thank you. How you doing? Uh, my name is Bob Wilson from uh, 402 West Stewart. Uh, I had a couple of questions that I didn't do research for, but the lady from uh, BWSD was here, and it was better than doing the research because I got it straight from the horse's mouth. That's right. They offered us $846,700 per month for uh, 14.92 per 1,000 cubic feet. That's equivalent to uh, pay $8 per month per household. I told y'all this one time before, because 1,000 cubic feet is equivalent to 7,480 gallons of water. I looked it up. A human individual in one household only uses 
80 to 100 gallons per day. Times that times 31. That's only 3,100 gallons a day. Now, that's 800, that, that's eight dollars per day. Genesee County is getting the same deal right here. So instead of figuring like, well, we might have to pay $17 million. Let's match it up to Genesee County. Genesee County pays $150 every three months. Right. So now if we get the water with the same price that Genesee County is getting, really, the same deal, shouldn't Flint be able to pay $150 every three months? Yes. Yeah. Who's making the money? Where is the money going? I saw that, uh, yeah. I saw that, uh, that presentation, and I started thinking, right? In 2012, Mike Brown went on the news saying that Flint had a $4.5 million surplus in 2013. When I looked at that presentation, it showed a departure. It showed a downward, downward departure in 2014. So we were on Detroit water in 2013, and then a departure in 2014. So we was making more money when we were on Detroit water than we are on Flint River water. Now, we the study that you all saw sent out is based on 154 pound dog drinking two liters of water at point eight. We need a study done now, since y'all are going to be consultants. Let me start with the consultant and tell me, I'm 260, 267 pounds. I drink more than two liters a day. And the water, uh, the TTHM is 0.9. Can you bring a consultant, a consultant in and tell me, if it's seven years for a 154 pound person, I'm 267 and it's over 0.9. Can you bring a consultant in to tell me how long do I have to live? Because it's seven years. to Flint Water. On June 29, 2013, they had a formal meeting and they said that Flint was represented. I don't think so, because if Flint was represented, they said that Flint did not have the capacity to deliver treated water. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you're not asking about Thank you. Thank you. It does pertain to our minimum standard of drinking water because we bathe in this. We use this to boil water to cook for our families. Inhalation is a higher risk of exposure than ingestion. With the list that I gave you earlier today, it shows that studies have been done. There were 31 volunteers that had blood samples taken and that with 10 minute showers showed the highest exposure to the TTHS compared to those who drank one liter of water in 10 minutes. When they did a repeat test 30 to 60 minutes later, it showed that the levels had gone down, but it was still above their baseline. Concentrations for TTHS were a thousand times lower in the people who drank the water, and the levels of people who showered increased by a factor of four. Why is this not being addressed? I also want to know. When will we get the full list of chemicals being used in our water? When is that going to be available to the public? That's been asked multiple times too. That has not been disclosed to us. 
And why are, when are we going to have a meeting with EPA in the DEQ where the citizens can ask the question you want to ask? Not be censored, not have Mr. Croft decide what questions are important and which ones are not. Right, right. Because that is what we expected at the last meeting, and that is why you had the reaction you had. And then even though DEQ said that, or sorry, EPA rep said that TDS, which are total dissolved solids, are not a standard of the EPA. It is a standard. Maybe not one that's enforced. It's a secondary standard. And their minimum for TDS is 50. Ours is testing at 236. So why is that not a concern? Because that's a concern for me. That's a concern for my family. Our water isn't considered dangerous, but it's the sediments and the bacteria that can happen with the interchangeable sediments. I have sediment in my water, and I'm sure I'm not the only one up here no, that has sediment in my water. So, when are these questions going to be answered? When are when is this going to become important, as important to Mr. Ambrose and Governor Snyder as it is to the citizens of Flint? Like I said, if anybody wants a copy, I have a printout on what the reform is, what the short-term effects are, what the long-term effects are. Think short-term effects, central nervous system, cardiac arrhythmias, abnormalities of liver and kidney. Nobody is addressing short term. Why? They don't want to. 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 They